Miles here, milesbeckler.com, and this video is part two of the DIY sales funnel video series. In part one, we installed WordPress, got our theme together, and we got our first kind of basic funnel together in a few steps. Now, what I'm going to be doing is following along, building out this website all the way to not just an affiliate site, but we're gonna build a members area, we're gonna build a product delivery area, we're gonna put a shopping cart in, we're literally gonna build an entire online business here together, step by step. Now this is video two in the series. If you missed video one, I will put a link to that in the description. You kind of need to be through that with all of those pieces set up in order for this all to make sense and for these steps to make sense for you. And just a little perspective before we jump in. In creating a website, creating a funnel online, and building your business online, you're going to notice that some days and some kind of tasks, you're going to feel like you just get massive amounts of things done, right? Video one was like that. We covered an incredible amount of ground together in a very short period of time. This video is going to be a little bit more tying up the loose ends of a few things, right? We're going to do a lot of little things in this video to really kind of prepare ourselves for the next big push, which is going to be in the in the next video in this series. So let's jump in. I've got my WordPress dashboard in behind um, my screen here, which I'll, I'll reveal in a second and we'll get to work. So log into your WordPress dashboard if you've got it already. If you don't have that set up, again, go to video one, follow those steps in there. And what I didn't talk about at the end of video one, which is kind of where we're going to start here, is testing, right? We actually built a funnel, an affiliate funnel in video one, and I didn't very clearly say, okay, now go test it. Opt in with your own email address. Make sure you got added to the correct list. Make sure that list replies and automatically follows up with you with your follow-up sequence. And every time we create something, you test it. It was one of those things I felt went without saying, but yet here I am a couple of days later realizing, no, 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 I do need to be incredibly clear and testing it is incredibly important. One other thing before we jump in, which is also testing on mobile devices. Here is that website site on my phone. Come on, pick that up. There it is. And do you notice how the headline text is really kind of close together? That's up here. You got this headline text really close. And then this text is a little far apart. So some people were saying in the comments that they weren't a fan of how that looked. They thought it looked like crap because of how close that was. So that's the first place we're going to go. And that's the first thing I think you do after you test the tech on your desktop, right? Go through the opt-in sequence. Did it add, to, add you to the list? Did it take you to the right page? Did it deliver you the freebie? If that works, then go look on it. Look at your opt-in page on as many different devices as you can. My wife has a very small iPhone. I have a very big Android phone. We've got tablets. We look at it in just about every browser to just see how it looks and adapt accordingly. So first thing we're going to do is let me get out of here. I'm in the the dashboard and I want to go straight to my home page which is that landing page. So here you are. You can see we're here and this is I'm going to click on the Edit Thrive Content Builder, so I'm going to get into where I'm editing my landing page because I'm going to resolve those issues that uh, showed up on that. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and highlight this. You can see I have it set to Heading 1. I'm going to set that to Heading 2. And I'm going to click out of there. And I'm going to take this, which has big. I can see how big the spacing is here. And I'm going to change this line height to 25. And line height is the spacing between the lines. That looks a little bit better. I'm going to click Save Changes right there. I'm going to bring myself back full screen here. So give me one second. Now I got my phone and I'm going to test this. And we're going to look together. I'm just going to go refresh that page and see how it looks. Bingo. So now you can see here, it looks a lot cleaner. I've got better spacing up here, which is really important. There's the spacing I'm talking about. Better spacing here. And what I really like is that the whole thing loads with my button showing right there. So that's it. We're good, right? And for anybody who was like, oh my gosh, your funnel doesn't look amazing. Well, ClickFunnels, everything else looks amazing. 
relax, tranquilo, just all we got to do is play with a couple of the settings, and again, my goal in version 1.0, or step one of this, was to give a gigantic brain dump on the big steps, and now we get to go in and do these little things, so adjust and adapt accordingly, because that is the job. Let's get back to work here. I want to go back into the dashboard. Now, I talked about updating WordPress all the time, and now we have updates available. You can see I've got these little red callout bubbles here and here, but the easiest place you see this little it looks like a refresh icon and it says five this is the WordPress updates so I'm clicking on this icon up here at top and what it does is it brings us to the updates then we simply scroll down and right here you can tell like they're just trying to get me to um, rate it I'm gonna say I already did so they can go away and that's out of my way now you can see I've got plugin updates and I've got a theme update sitting here for me you could also see that we have the latest version of WordPress it would be here if we needed to reinstall it we always start with the plugins we click select all I click update plugins and then I'm just patient and we don't want to leave this page when this is going on when updates are happening we want to let it run and you could tell that it's running because we got the little spinny wheel up here and you can see it goes it enabled maintenance mode if I X out of this window or go do a bunch of other things right now really quickly um, that's when we can kind of get ourselves into trouble it can get locked up in a maintenance mode we can kind of cause problems so it does require patience here so I'm gonna let those run in the background it's only going to take a minute and I want to show you this is what we're going to be accomplishing today right can you see that on my notepad so these are the notes we have it's actually a lot of little things there's nothing here that's going to be huge but we're going to go through it and specifically to let you know the assets I've created for myself first, I've written one page of content, which is my about me page. Then I've written one blog post based on a keyword I found in the keyword tool. We're going to go get those two things set up and in place. I've also created a really basic and simple looking logo. And I mean basic and simple. It's something I just slapped together in Photoshop. If you don't have Photoshop, you could try using Canva with the the theme that we're using, I went with 150 pixels wide and 50 pixels tall because that's the size of the logo that was already in place. So I've got those two posts, I've got the logo. What we're going to do after we get these updates, we're going to go in, we're going to add the logo, we're going to add the about page. We're going to go into our category settings. We're going to play with the category settings so you can see where those are. And really what we're laying the foundation for in this video is to give you the ability to do content marketing with written blog posts in addition to having your funnel there. This is the process of building yourself as an authority site. This is how my wife and I generate three quarters of a million visits per month, right, from Google organic traffic. We're going to get that blog post in place. We're going to set up the menus. We're going to customize the blog itself. And I'm going to show you at the end a little sneaky trick in case you're still like, ah, I don't know about the look of this. Uh, I'm going to show you the, the sneaky trick, if we will. So I'm going to get myself out of the way. And you can see what happened here. It enabled maintenance mode. It updated. The little green bars mean that it was done. And you know when it's finished, when it says disabling maintenance mode. And then you can re return to the plugins. But what I generally do is I go right back to the WordPress updates page. Now that I've updated all of the plugins, then we go in and we actually update the theme and we just simply click here, we click update themes and that will run. Now, a little note about themes. I want to go real quick with you and show you if you don't love this theme and we're going to get there in a minute. So I'm going to go to thrive themes.com. And one moment while this loads, we're going to go log in here and I'm going to go to the member dashboard. Now I chose the squared theme because it has the apprentice feature, which is how we lay out our courses. If you want to look at the other options, you click on demo websites here inside of the Thrive Themes area. And then you've got this top bar that says select a theme. And what it just did is it actually loaded their focus blog theme. And you can look at it. One of the reasons that their stuff's going to look a lot better than our stuff looks when we upload it is because they have basic text 
text in place and basic images. With our site, we don't. But if you wanted to look at another one, you can. this is the one we have, which is squared. You simply click on it, and it'll show you what it looks like when it's all populated with really cool content. I'm going to show you how to customize this. Um, but yeah, if you're, if you're just like, ah, I'm not really sold on that, great. I really do want to say and want to kind of like, I don't want to say warn you, but I really want to make sure it's clear that at this point in the game, the goal is not perfection. We are, the goal is far from perfection. What the goal is at this point is to get our imperfect version 1.0 up and running. We want to hang as much content and get as many of the different things, right? The little assets and the content and the logo and all these little things. We want to get them in place so it starts to have the feel of a real blog because then once it has that feel, we can make better decisions based on layout. We can customize it, etc. So you can see right here, we're done with this update at this point. And I return to the WordPress updates page. Um, it does say that the plugin has one more update. I'm not going to go in. Sometimes when you update, there's a, a second update they need to go in series. I'm not going to go ahead and jump in that, but it looks like we're all good here. So where we go next on to this is I'm going to go add the logo. So the logo I made is very, very simple. You'll probably get a chuckle out of how simple it is. I'm going to go to the Thrive dashboard. Or actually, I wanted to go to theme options. Thrive dashboard will get us to theme options. And we're going to be using a lot more of the Thrive's um, kind of standard items in there soon. So you can see right here, we've got this logo area. I'm going to click upload. And I'm going to upload a file, and I'm going to select that from my hard drive. I saved it as a PNG with a transparent background so that it'll look good on any color. And I don't know why this uploader is not working here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on New Media. It's probably because i got my pop-up blocker running here. So I'm going to do Media. I'm going to select a file from the media. It's going to let me in here. And then I want to go to DIY Sales Funnel. Thank you for your patience while we do this together. And again, my goal with this whole series is to show you every step. I want you to see how easy this is. Yes, it takes work. No, it's not an incredible amount of work. Anyone can do this stuff. I never had anyone teach me this when I got going. So that's kind of, you know, my wife nailed it. She's she's saying that, um, Miles, you're, you're building this out for your 18-year-old, 19-year-old self when nobody did this and showed you and you had to figure it all out. And that's true. So I just clicked on the main Thrive theme options. You can go over here on Squared to our theme, click theme options. It's going to take us into the theme option. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the logo. I want to go upload. I'm just going to click media library. It's going to be sitting there for me. You can see it's literally DIY and a funnel. I select. It's up now. I go down to the bottom and I save all changes. Ta-da, we have a logo in place. If you don't have the ability to make a logo or you don't want to do it in Canva, you can go hire somebody on Fiverr. Just make sure they have really good reviews or you can hire a graphics person on Upwork, our two places. So we've got that done, the logo. Let's go add some content. The first place I want to go is to a page. I want to add the About Us page. And I'm going to do About DIY Funnels page. So we click pages here. You can do add new here. You also have the ability to use this plus right here and choose a new page. Now there's a difference between pages and posts. Pages are for static content, right? For things that are not gonna be, they don't matter on when they were published. Posts are more chronological. Posts are where you put your blog posts and your content marketing. Pages is where you put your kind of new things that are never gonna change. The about me, the contact us, your funnel pages are all pages, your sales pages are all pages, and then just your blog posts you want to rank to meet new people, those are all going to be posts. So what we're doing is we're jumping in here and I'm gonna put about DIY sales funnel. And I already wrote this, so to save us some time, I just need to go grab this. It's my About Us post here. And really super simple stuff. Uh, I didn't spend too much time on this copy, so don't necessarily come like model what I'm doing to a T. It's not designed to be used that way. And I'm just going to click Publish here. And ultimately, what I did is I just published the post. This is the quickest and simplest way. You can see, again, we got the permalink set up, so it's got DIY sales funnel. I'm going to edit that, and I'm going to put about DIY sales funnel. Sure. Click OK. 
Now, I would need to click update, but there's one other thing I want to play with real quick to show you how is we go to the bottom. And this is the Yoast SEO plugin. This is what we put together in uh, the first video. This is the, the plugin that controls our metadata. As you can tell, the snippet preview, this is what this page will look like in a Google result. So you can see the title is kind of lame, in my opinion. It just repeats itself, right? But then the description, if you are seeking to sell your products on the internet, you need a sales funnel. Perfect. I will go with with that but here I'm gonna click on this and you can see it pulls up this little title area and I could just type over this so Perfect. Let's just do that. Why did we create a do-it-yourself training? So I kept the DIY sales funnel in there because that's the name of my brand. That's also the keyword phrase that I'm wanting to rank the entire site for, right? I want to own that phrase. But what I did is I just updated it to be a little bit more human friendly and you get that question in there. So somebody sees it on Google, be like, why do we create a free do-it-yourself training? Okay, cool. I want a free training. Perfect. So I'm, I'm happy with that here. I click update and we're done. My about page is done. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in to the categories for the blog post. We're going to add a blog post next, but first I want to manage the categories. So on posts, you hover on posts and you get your categories area. This is obviously where I would add a new post. This is where I would go manage my other posts, but I'm going to click categories to get us in here first. So it has one basic one that's, that's set up from default, which is uncategorized. Now it it's worthwhile to take a little bit of time to think about your niche and your content and where you're going and what kinds of content categories are going to make sense for your business uh, and for your content marketing efforts because it is something that's picked up. It does group your content by topic, so it adds relevance. So I'm going to put together two funnels and I'm going to do sales funnels. Let's do, actually, I'm going to do funnel hacks, and I'll do funnel hacks here, parent none, and I'll leave the description blank for now, and I'm going to add new category, and you're going to notice it's going to pop up over here on the right, so now I've got two, and then I'm going to do traffic, right, because it makes sense that I would end up doing posts on how to drive traffic to your sales funnel in addition to posts about the funnels themselves, right? So I added that. So now you can see I've got traffic, I've got funnel hacks, I've got the default uncategorized. I'm going to head and I'm going to delete this. I click quick edit and I thought I could delete it from here, but let's click cancel. No worries. I'm going to let that stay there. And the reason I can't actually delete that now that I see it, it has our default post in. So once I delete that hello world post, I can come in here and delete that here. You can see I've got the delete option on these because it has zero. So I've got traffic. I've got funnel hacks. If I spelt something wrong, I can go in, I can quick edit it and it gives it this here and I could do uh, sales funnel hacks if I wanted, right? To really, really kind of reinforce that sales funnel idea. Now the slug is actually what goes up in the URL if it's displayed in the URL. So you never want spaces in the slug. You never want capital letters, all lowercases and dashes. Click update category. And there we go. Now I've got my main categories. Let's go into the posts. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold control and click on all posts. And this, you can see it loaded it in a new tab up here. So I'm going to open this. You can see here's the default hello world post. Trash. Get rid of that guy and it's going to delete it out. So there it's gone. Now I'm going to go back to my tab that has the categories. I'm going to refresh this page. And my goal here is I want to get rid of uncategorized and let's see here. Interesting. It is not letting me. Oh, well, I'm moving on beyond that. Sometimes things just don't work the way I expect. So I can, I'm, we're going to now add the post, right? So click new. We got the post there. I also have posts, add new. This bar shows up up top. So let's do new post. And let me go grab that real quick, which is right here. And I found this through the keyword research tool, right? So milesbeckler.com slash KW finder is how we get to the keyword tool. And it logs me in, or it loads up the page. I click sign in. You can get three free searches there per day if you want. Easy stuff. 
Um, I use it a little bit more aggressively than that, so I bought up to their paid one. And then what I did is I typed in sales funnel, right? And I'm, I'm looking for blog topics. I'm going to show you what I did to come up with the idea of why I created what I created. And I looked sales funnel, sales pipeline, okay, sales funnel template. This is one I'm going to be putting up together. And then I saw this here, sales funnel stages, sales pipeline stages. I just stopped there. I honestly didn't go low enough. If I was to do this again, I would focus on this one because of the fact that it's got a 24, which is the difficulty score. It means it's easier to rank than this one, but content marketing, this is what I'll write my blog post about tomorrow, right? So I've got this in here. And the reason why I'm putting this in, I want to actually search for sales funnel stages is I'm trying to get the relevant keywords that are similar to this to see what it thinks is similar here. So now I'm going back. That's the wrong one. So here's my add new post, right? New post is all I do. And then I'm going to go into my content here and I'm going to call it sales funnel stages. I'm getting my keyword phrase at the very beginning. And honestly, I would capitalize the first letter in each of these, but for time's sake, I'm gonna leave that for a later date. So that's in, you can see that it automatically put my permalink up, which is great. I'm gonna go down here into the editor and I'm just gonna copy what I wrote in Notepad and I wrote a fair bit, copy that, boom, and publish that in. I'm just going to give a quick glance over the text, see if there's anything misspelled. Okay. Desire, just, ah, one time. Cool. I have Grammarly running. I don't know if you know about the Grammarly browser plugin, but Grammarly as a browser plugin is great. It actually... Um, it does more than just spell check things, which for me, it's massive. So now at the end, this is one of the things I wanted to show you at the end. If you would like help building your own sales funnel, be sure to check out our free do-it-yourself sales funnel training, which you can access by clicking here. Where is that at? It's at my homepage, right? That's my call to action. So DIYsalesfunnel.com. I'm essentially putting out a piece of content that's going to attract someone from Google organic search result. And then when they read the whole thing, they're going to like this. I'm going to hover over here, which now I have all the text I want to turn into a link. I click the link here and then I paste my URL in. I click apply and that's it. Now that's a hyperlink. And now when somebody reads to the bottom and clicks there, it's going to take them to my opt-in page. Perfect. On the right hand side in this column over here, that's um, it's got the publish, the format, but if you look down below, it's got the categories. And this is where the different categories are. So this is gonna be a sales funnel hack, right? So I'm gonna click sales funnel hack, that's dialed in. I don't use tags much. You can use tags if you wanna organize your content to the next level, but use them sparingly and only use great tags. I just prefer to keep things kind of focused. So now I'm gonna look, you can see it pulled my big title from up top. Uh, I'm going to click here and take site name. Let's see. Can I just copy this? Yeah. So I'm going to copy that. And I'll paste that there. That didn't work. That's hilarious. This is how things work. And this is how we get done. So I'm going to come up here and copy this just so I don't type too much. Scroll down to the bottom. And again, I would go through this with a fine tooth comb. Uh, I wrote it. I blasted this out super fast. Um, description, every great sales funnel is going to walk process. Da, da, da. Perfect. That's okay. So what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the blue here, which is this sale, this title here. And then I'm looking at this lower text, which is your description, which is down here. If I don't like what this says, if this isn't compelling people or relevant or doesn't have my keyword, you know, sales funnel in the first few words, I'm going to modify that by putting that there. I kind of like what it pulled up with. So good. I'm just going to click publish. Now, real quick, we're going to do two other things with this blog post. We got to talk about images. I can't really get you much farther down the road without talking about images and specifically talking about what a royalty free image is. There's lots and lots of images on the internet which are copyright protected. I'm not an intellectual property lawyer. I'm not a lawyer. This is not business advice. I'm just trying to help you understand how this works. Thank you for understanding that. So, essentially, if you go use a 
image, if you just go pull an image from Google Images and someone else owns the copyright to that, you could be sued. I have friends who have used images unknowingly of like Shutterstock.com, which is a stock photo that you have to pay for. He got sued for like four grand for accidentally using uh, an image from theirs on a blog post. So don't do it. So what do you do instead? That's This is the trick. I know it's a free royalty-free site. It's called Pixabay, P-I-X-A-B-A-Y.com. This, so every image on here is free, and the way it works is they do try to upsell you on the paid ones. So I'm going to click here, and I'm going to say um, sales funnel, right? So I'm looking for an image that's relevant to what I'm doing here. So let's see here, sale uh, funnel. Let's see if anything shows up for funnel. And then you browse through. Perfect. So these are the kind of basic funnel options that it comes up with. There's other free, royalty-free websites, but my main goal in explaining this to you is make sure you're using, and you know for a fact you're using free, royalty-free images. Um, there's my picture. Perfect. I'm going to click that. So it pulls this up. This is great. We just click free download. I want the about the biggest one, I think they make you like create an account for the next bigger one, which is fine to do, but I just don't want to do that with you right now because just save time. Wow, Bass did. That's the best CAPTCHA ever. So it's going to download it right here. I'm going to put it in my DIY sales funnel folder, funnel, blah, blah, blah. You can see I have the other one from my logo there that I paid for. If you are going to buy um, images, I don't, I don't know if you necessarily need to. Bigstock.com seems to have a really good kind of price point, I think, compared to some of the other ones. So now I've downloaded it. And what I want to do is I'm going to go over here and this is a featured image. Now, featured images don't work in every single theme, and there's something that you can have customized to where they don't show in the theme itself. But on this theme, it is set to be a default, and I'm just going to go ahead and upload that one here. And that's funny because I don't have, because I got my pop up blocker. So I need to go into media if I'm up here. Click on media, control click to open up my media window. So the media is where you manage all of your uploads and everything that you've created. And I'm going to go ahead and just add new, select file. Hmm. I'm not sure why this isn't working for me right now. All right, well, I'm going to need to debug this. So if you're having the same issue, I th I'm pretty sure this is something in my browser. I run a very heavy browser. I'm tracking pixels. I'm blocking pixels. I run Grammarly and other things. So I'm pretty sure that's why I'm not um, able to do that with this here. If you obviously have problems with this, I would definitely reach out to the hosting company, um, use their support to reach out and ask. I just did a Control F5, which allows me to hard refresh the page. And I've, I've got some sort of a cookie conflict here, so that's goofy. Um, let's go into this post visual. So we also have, if I wanted to put the imagery in here, you're going to notice there's this add media button. And what it's going to do is it actually brings up this, but for some reason, my mine's not working there. So what I want to do is click media library. And then I'm just going to put this picture in that I already had up. I'm going to click insert into post. You can see it insert it into post here. It did make it look a little a little weird, right? So what I want to do is I'm going to click on it and then I'm going to click the pen. And then I'm going since it's centered as none, I'm going to center it to the right and then I want it to link to and I'm going to link it to the home page. So I'll put it there and Boom. Now you can see it fits much neater here. The last thing I'm going to do is I want to embed really quick. Let's go ahead and save that. Always good to update your efforts on a very regular basis. So then I'm going to go to my YouTube channel. One quick second while this loads. And I'm going to use my search. This search here searches my channel only and sales funnel stages and i've got this one here let's open this and what i'm going to do is i'm going to embed this video because it's best practice for our blog posts for us to actually create multimedia blog posts so i'm going to scroll this down we click the share 
We click embed. We get this snippet of code. Copy it. I'm going to teach you an HTML tag, so get ready. It's a we're, we're in the learning process. Where am I? I am in here. Got it. And then I'm going to put this down. Let's see. Ready? Let's get started. Perfect. So right after that. Now you notice inside of this editor window, we have two specific windows. I've got the visual tab and I have the text tab. 90% of the time, 95% of the time, you're going to be using the visual tab, if not always. But since I just grabbed a piece of code, we go to the text. This is where it's all code based. And you can see this is the HTML tag essentially for the link. And this is the HTML tag for the image. You don't need to know much about HTML in the long run. To be honest with you, you'll probably pick up a few things over time. But this is the one thing we want to do is add that code here. And I'm going to add one snippet, which is center which is open bracket, center, close bracket. And then at the end of it, you have to do open bracket, forward slash, center, close bracket. So the way HTML works is we wrap what we want to happen in tags. So you can see that, that I've got the center. This is my iframe that has my video itself. You can see there's the video embed code. And then I wrapped it in the center. Now, before I leave the text editor, I come up, I click update. Once that's done, I can click back over to the visual side. Now we can view the post. Got it. So you can see I've got my logo in place now. I've got this big green area. And behind this, this is actually where the, um, if I used the featured image, the featured image would show up here. So let me actually do that real quick to show you how that works. Um, um, actually, yeah, let me do that real quick. So let's go back. So I'm here. So I'm going to click back into edit post. Set featured image. All right, we already tried this. That's hilarious. I'm going in circles. All right, ignore it. We're moving on. We're moving forward because I want to make some progress here. Or actually, I can do the same. Let's do select file. Let's go media library. I'm going to select this one. It's going to stretch it because it's not the right size. But I want to show you what I'm talking about just to give you that kind of full understanding of how this works. And again, if you have someone who's going to do customizations, whether they're from Fiverr or from Upwork, they can remove that whole block or on other themes, it doesn't even have that. So we're going to click view post and you're going to see it stretches out that. So obviously this is not a good image for me to use in this position, right? And that's because there's text on back and it's got my header text here. So I'm going to remove that, but I wanted to show you what I'm talking about here, just so you understand that you can kind of create nice images that fit. Definitely not necessary. And what I'm, I'm going to show you the other option and I'm just going to remove that here. It's gone. And really, again, my goal with this, I want you to get comfortable in the WordPress dashboard. I live in the WordPress dashboard, right? Like keyword tool, WordPress, YouTube. That's it. That is an entire content marketing. You can build a multi-million dollar business with these few tools. That's why I'm kind of taking my time to go around and show you some of the ins and outs, right? I said at the beginning, we're tying up loose ends. I'm looking over my notepad, so give me one quick second. So the blog post, the ad, the Pixabay, SEO data, we're done, selected the category. So we're done with the blog post at this point. It is in the right category. We got that stuff loaded up. Oh, I wanna show you how that looks. Just, um, you can click this permalink here. It'll take me to the actual page. And we scroll down and you can see it's laid out pretty nice. We got the marketing funnel stages. We got that in there. That looks pretty good. Cool. And then we go down to the bottom. We've got this link, you click there. And we'll see that the link takes us to, and, see here the link takes us directly to our landing page cool so now we have a content marketing component in place that's pretty fantastic so you'll notice at the very top of the site here we have an assign a primary menu we have no navigation yet so let's go in and get that set up so what we want to do here is under the appearance tab which is the same place we went to go work with the themes this is where we have the menu right now the menus, we're gonna click on this and it's gonna be empty right now because we don't have anything in there yet. And that's what we're going to set up together. And you're gonna see there's no menu here. It says, give your menu name and create menu. Okay, let's do this. So I'm gonna say main blog menu. 
And I'm putting blog in there just because you can create multiple menus. You could have a separate menu for your downloads area. Like if you have um, a product that you're selling that has four modules and six lessons in each module, you can create an entirely separate menu structure that would display on those pages. It's really powerful. So just use a name that kind of it makes sense to where it goes, right? Don't just put menu one, menu two, menu three. You're going to get confused at some point in the future. So we're going to put this as the primary menu. I'm going to click save menu. Now I've told it where it's going to go. And I want the about, I want the free DIY sales funnel. And I want, let me add those two real quick. So I'm just checking the boxes on the ones I want. Click add to menu. And then down here on categories, I expand this area. I click that and I click add to menu. So now you can see I've got these three things in. So let's see, about, I'm going to rearrange these. So you just click and drag and you can rearrange them, put them in any order you want. This is essentially the top one's going to be on the left of the nav, middle, and that'll be on the right. That looks good to me. So I click save. And that has been saved. So I'm going to click over here and I'm just going to refresh by hitting enter on this page. And now you can see I've got the DIY and then I've got my first three here. Now I'm not a fan of this green, right? Like I got the blue up here, blue, and then I got this green around. It's a default from the theme. So there's a couple of things. I'm curious, sometimes their themes have kind of like overarching um, color controls. So I'm gonna go look for that first. And what I mean is, so a theme is kind of like a global template idea, right? I'm going to click Style and Layout Settings, and you can see Color Scheme. This is exactly what I'm talking about. So someone who knows code, or if you hired somebody, they could go in and manually change every little place in the code where the different color scheme is. But we can just go here, and I can just choose Blue, right? And now I'm going to go click Save All Changes. And we're just watching a little spinning wheel up here. It reloads the page. We always let it fully finish. Now I can see it's fully finished. I'm going to click this one and click enter all right we're closer now right we're, we're within in the range and honestly this is this is livable for me you're going to notice over here on the sidebar we have these kind of like recent posts recent comments archives some of these things that just don't make sense right meta like you want to remove this and eventually you would potentially add different things. You could put advertisements in the side. You could put uh, image ads like this that would take them to the, the opt-in page if you would like. Um, I'm going to show you where to go handle that right now. So let's go here to the dashboard. And we're going to go under appearance again. And that's called the widget area. So we go into widgets. Now widgets are things that do things, which is like the worst explanation ever. But a widget sized area you can fill with anything else. Um, so you could have it be a search function, like all of these little things are called technically widgets. Main sidebar is what we're working with. We have widgetized areas in the footer as well. And it allows us to just globally decide what shows up. And it's as easy as moving and deleting things. So that meta one I didn't like, I'm just gonna drag it over here and it's gone. Categories, I'm going to go ahead and drag it over here, and it's gone. Archives, I'm going to drag it over there, and it's gone. So now I've got a search bar, recent posts, and a recent comments. That's it for me. I'm good there, right? Like, you can look around, and we can put, like, a tag cloud if you're using clouds. You could put your Facebook fan page box in the side if you want. You can go get plugins that do different things. I personally build sites now with no sidebar. And the reason why I'm being kind of custom building sites without sidebar, let's go show you real quick. The reason I've been doing this is because it's a big time trend in marketing, right? I watch what other companies who are way more successful than I am, I watch what they're doing and I look at how they're presenting their content. And you can see I've got a featured image up top, super clean and white. I've got just navigation, a logo. I've got a ribbon. We'll show you how to pop this up. This is one of my opt-ins. You can see it actually takes you to, to an opt-in there. Um, but what I want to show you is there's no sidebar. And my goal here is readership. And honestly, where'd I get the idea? Medium.com, which is a massive website. And we could talk about, I could, I could possibly show you how to do that in a future video. It's beyond the scope of this first video. For now, we're just going to clean it up to a way that we like. There's no save button on this page. You'll notice that's fine. We simply move on to the next item on our list, which is, oh man, we are almost done here. 
good on you for making it this far. I want to show you how to do some light basic customization. Now, there's three levels of customization that you have the potential of doing here. Number one is what we're going to look at, which is kind of the WordPress default customized tool. Number two is to have someone who get CSS. CSS is a language. It's cascading style sheets. To get someone who knows CSS to write custom CSS snippets to get your site to work certain ways. For me, removing the sidebar was a CSS update. And when you have someone update CSS, you want to make sure that they go in through the Thrive dashboard, theme options, and there's a special spot for it, site layout and settings. And there's this box right here, custom CSS. The reason it's important for them to put it here is because if they code it into the theme itself, what's ultimately going to happen is when your theme updates, like we just did today, it's going to wipe out those changes because it's going to download a new CSS file, right? Because they updated the CSS file and it will overwrite your customizations. When they put your customizations in this box here, just put the CSS snippets right in here, then it will survive all future updates. The third way to do it is to create a child theme on top where they recode things into a child theme. Your developer will know when to use this function you're looking at on the screen and when to use a child theme instead to actually hard code it at the theme level. That's not for you to decide. But if you're hiring somebody on Fiverr or Upwork, make sure you let them know that you want the CSS, the custom CSS to be entered in this area here so it survives all updates. Cool. Well, now let's go look at the easy way for us to make some basic changes. I'm going to go to all posts because I want to load the blog post right now. So I'm here. I'm looking at it. I'm going to click view and it's going to load the blog post. And I'm like, cool, right? So I got a website. I think it looks okay at this point. I'm not a huge fan of this color. Um, my blog, my links, if you notice, they're really light. I, I prefer dark blue links, kind of like Google, right? So let's jump in and tweak that. So right here on top, we've got this little paintbrush and it says customize. Click on that. And it brings up this extra panel right here, and it's going to show us what we're working with here. It tells us which theme we're working within, and now we have some very basic kind of customization opportunities. If you get really crazy here, there at the bottom, just so you know, there's a reset to default, right? So, so if all of a sudden, like, the ish hits the fan, and it's, like, out of control, and you're just like, wow, this I just totally destroyed everything, just reset it to defaults, take your time with it. What I want to do here first is I'm going to go into the colors area, and the link color is the first thing I'm going to change. I simply clicked on that. You could see here's the different options it gives natively. I'm going to make it a much darker color, and you can see that it should, in the bottom of the post, take that in-text link and it made it much darker. If I wanted to change it to like red, I could literally just click, or I guess that'd be a purple. Um, I personally, I think there's a, a standard convention online that links are blue. People are used to links being blue. So I'm going to go with blue and that's it. Headline text, I can tell that's actually a little bit of a gray color. I always like my text to be black. Um, these, if you don't know, these are called hexadecimal numbers. Um, a hexadecimal number is just a, a color code. It's a web web friendly number. All zeros is black. You can I just drag this little box right. I could change it anywhere I want, and then you got the color scale that happens here. But ultimately, I want my text to be all black. I'm gonna go in oop, and make sure that's all black. And a little shout out and a little love to the All Blacks because they're the best there is for my Kiwi friends who might be watching. And then body text color, that looks a little gray or off gray as well. I'm going to slide that down and that's closer, but I'm just going to do 000000. And that is all black right there. Now you can see that we've got that text change. We're going to scroll up to the tippy top here. So this is darker. I really like that. Perfect. So I'm going to save and publish. And what I just did here is I'm saving those changes I made. And I'm going to go collapse that. And we go right back here to the option. Fonts. I don't play around with fonts too much. I would 
if you ever do mess with your fonts, make sure that your fonts are uh, what's called like a web standard font. They load faster. They're pre-cached all over the web. If you use a custom font or something fancy, you can kill your slow your your page load speed. Body font size is at 17. I like that. I usually a lot of themes sometimes I'll put it at 14 and I'll bump it up into the 16 range. Again, readability is my ultimate goal for everything. So that all looks good. We're gonna go into the header now. I want to work up here because I'm not a huge fan of that. So you can see that I've got this weird hover color here. And let me actually, I'm going to show you a little sneaky trick. Not, not terribly sneaky, but I'm going to go back to colors. And this blue that I've got, I want to make sure and use that blue everywhere. Whoa, I shouldn't have done that. That was awesome. So let's do that blue. Oh, what's this blue? Let's saturate that one. Cool. So this is my blue. So I'm just going to copy this blue color. And this, again, is the hexadecimal code for the blue. And I'm going to put it in a notepad. i got to close these two that have my content in it. And I'm just going to slap that there real quick. So now I can really easily match colors, right? Because I don't necessarily want to get like five shades of blue on my website. So I click there. I highlight the hexadecimal. And I paste that in. And now I've got that same color. Highlighted menu background color. I'm not sure exactly what that is. When I don't know what something is, because the theme creators, they make these phrases up, right? They define what that is. But I'm essentially just going in. Everything that I see is this powder blue. I'm going to go ahead and change to the dark blue. If I see something go crazy over here, I work backwards. I'm very, very much, if you haven't noticed, let's just bully our way through it and see what happens. That, that is my approach with everything. Now at the top, we've got this header type here, and I don't like the dark header. There's no need for me to have these dark colors up here. So I'm going to click here, and I'm going to go custom color, and I want my custom color to be white. And there it is. It's white. But now what you noticed is my, uh, my links up top on navigation have changed colors. They're not as easy to read. So now I want to go make sure I change that. And I'm going to have to look for those. So I can see menu link color right here on top. I can take this. I can make them black. And they should stand out nice and neat. Perfect. They do. I'm going to go here and just make it all six zeros because that is true black. And I want true black here. Click out of it. Perfect. So now I'm going to click save and publish. At this point, right, DIY funnel, like... It's pretty cheesy. Did it myself, three minutes. But again, my goal is not to create, this is not like a passion, this is not a, a big time project for me. And I don't think it's important for you to go crazy and, and spend lots of money on design at first. What's important is getting the site to a point where you're comfortable enough to go publish every single day and go, 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 go. That's the game at that point is to go, go, go. And this is really it at this point. I'm happy enough with it, right? Like, I'm not sure how to change this area. I'll show you some. I might go into to CSS a little more, but I might not because I might end up losing you at that point, or at least some of you guys. Um, menus, widgets, static front page. I've already got that set. Additional CSS. Perfect. So I'm going to look one more time in header and see if I can see what this is. Cool. I'm good. So I'm going to save that. It's already saved. So I'm going to go ahead and X out of there. I'm going to go into my main menus. I want to go look at what we just did here. And so I'm going to go to posts again and all posts. And let's view it. I hit control F5 to refresh it, reload it. Sneaky, sneaky. Something didn't save. So I'm just going to click the customize. And when I'm saying something, I'm talking about that top area that's not bright white. And I want it to be, ah, it shows it there. So let's go into header. You see all Fs are white. Save and publish. And sometimes these things take a little bit of time to actually show up on the site itself. And that's totally normal. Um, again, I don't think that your goal should be spending much time in personally customizing your website. I think that a big important part, why is that is just, that is just frustrating. So 
if this doesn't come around in five minutes, right, I'm going to keep hitting control F5 to kind of keep reloading it. I would change my font color back on these so that they're white, just so it shows up. And I might hire someone to get that done for me. But the last thing I want to do is if you're like, okay, I don't know about this theme, Miles, like even with that white up there, like I'm not sold on it. First of all, a part of the reason, I want to go to the about page so we can look at a different page. Part of the reason why you're not necessarily going to be stoked on it, you can see this is full width, so you can move the container in, etc., make it narrower to easier read. But part of the reason why you're not going to be super stoked on it is because we don't have that much imagery, right? Like images are missing here. I would go in and create or have created a bunch of images. I would really spend a little bit of time. But again, the first two to three months of your website's life, right, that 60-day mark, that 90-day mark, the odds of you getting more than a few hundred or a thousand visitors are tiny. The odds of you really doing anything, like, like it's so, you just have to rough it out first. We're, we're molding a block of clay, and yesterday we, we got the clay on the table and we rounded the edges. Today we're, we're getting a little bit more detail in our clay sculpture that we're creating, but the goal, and really the trick is publish, 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 publish. Make sure everything's linking back to your homepage, which is your opt-in page, because the goal is to drive leads. You could start running your Facebook ads to this almost instantly if you'd like. And since I mentioned, if you aren't in love, let's say we're not in love with this theme. Miles, I want a different theme. Great. You come over to Thrive Themes, you log in on the member login page, you go down below, because I want to show you the last thing here is how easy it is to actually change in one fell swoop the entire shape and look of your website. So there it is. We're downloading that. It finished downloading. That's the entire theme. I come over here to Appearance. I'm going to click Appearance and Themes. I'm going to add New. Upload theme, right up here at the top, same button, same place. Oh, I did that twice, sorry, I opened and closed it. And focus blog is what I downloaded, I click open. And it is uploading right now. So this is going to upload and install. You can see in the bottom left corner of my screen, we're at 10, 12, 14, 15, 16%. So I'm literally uploading an entire look. I'm going to go ahead and activate this real quick and show you around just for a quick second. But I feel like why this is uploading, it's really important to reinforce the idea that your goal is to publish, publish, publish. What I have built here, not perfect. It's not designed to be perfect. If I get hung up on the little bits and pieces of trying to make it look perfect before anyone ever shows up, I'm going down the wrong path. I'm going down the path of never publishing. And you need to go down the path of publishing like a awesome person who publishes a lot, right? A 90 day challenge. And the goal should be mainly to write a new blog post focused on another keyword every single day for 90 days. Once you have 90 blog posts and you really have your voice going and you've really proven that you, you've breathed enough life into this blog, then go into the customization, hire someone on Fiverr, hire someone on Upwork, invest $70 or so for eight to 10 hours of work from a developer who can help you with that. So now you can see I've uploaded the focus blog. It just redirected, it unpacked it, it installed it. Theme was installed successfully. I can live preview the theme if I want, but the funny thing is it's probably gonna show me my homepage. And the reason that's funny is because it will look just like my funnel, right? Because that's what I had in place. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually activate this page, or excuse me, this theme. So now I put a whole new theme, and this is what makes, this is what in my opinion makes WordPress so special, is I'm literally able to go create, set up, and move and change site-wide changes. If I had a thousand posts, all thousand posts just got updated here. Um, so now I'm gonna go into posts and click all posts. And you can see they're squared, it's no longer active. This one's now active. I'm gonna click view. Boom. Way cleaner. I'm already I'm already satisfied with this, right? And if I wanted to like I like the white, I really I'm all about all white personally. So I'm gonna go customize here, and now I can customize this theme if I want. And we can look um you just you've got all the little kind of options here. And I want I'm gonna see if I can find a background. So I didn't any font. Nope, no background here. So they don't give us all of the, the bells and whistles. I would I would take this background and I would make it white. 
personally, so it's just white on white. You might notice that's exactly how my site looks. But this right here is awesome to me because it's very readable. If you load this on a mobile phone, it's going to look great. I'm going to go to the about page, which is going to be probably a full width page. Super readable. Like this is, this is leaps and bounds. I would just stop here and run with it because again, at this point in the game with where you're at, if you don't have the money to go all in on Facebook marketing and run literally Facebook ads to your opt-in page and, and play that game, content marketing is the game you have to play. And you got to write a lot of blog posts. You got to do a 90 day challenge. It's not going to be until you get 50 to nine, like at 50 blog posts that are all great, that are all focused on an individual keyword, you're going to start seeing traction. You had a hundred blog posts, all really well written, great blog posts that are their skyscraper method, better than who's already ranking, really, really good stuff. When you hit a hundred posts like that, you're going to have a very noteworthy amount of traffic to your website. And at that point, you're going to be able to play a lot different game of adding pop-ups, of adding the ribbons up top, like I showed you on my site, etc. And that's when your site will start to generate literally dozens or hundreds, maybe even thousands of subscribers per day who all go into your funnel. Now, if you're wondering, well, Miles, but I just want to do the Facebook ads to my funnel, but we I don't want to just run an affiliate funnel. I want to build out an actual sales system. I actually want to have a checkout feature. I actually want to deliver a product. Great. We're going to get into that into the future videos. I totally hear you and good on you for your willingness to kind of run. But I really, 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 my whole goal with this is to show the bootstrapper special, right? And for a total bootstrapper who's in a position where I was when I got started with my wife, we had zero dollars for Facebook pay-per-click. Actually, Facebook pay-per-click wasn't even a thing back then, uh, but we had no money for Google pay-per-click. We had no money for advertising at all. So we had to figure a way to drive traffic on our own. And it was through content marketing on WordPress. And now you have it. This, if you followed along from video one to this video here, you have a foundation that you can go now push forward with a 90-day challenge and literally create traffic out of your energy. It takes time, it takes hard work, it takes consistent effort over a sustained period of time to see the results. But as someone who gets three quarters of a million visits per month, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of leads per year, all organically from the energy we invested five, six, seven, eight years ago, it's absolutely worth the effort. It's worth everything. And now you have the foundation if you followed along. I thank you very much for watching up until this point. If you have questions for me at this point, hit me in the comments below. I'm happy to answer your questions and communicate and do the best I can there. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. If you're waiting for those next level, uh, how do we set up a shopping cart and how do we do a product delivery system? Those are coming in the next videos that we do here on the DIY Sales Funnel Series. Thank you for your interest in it. And give me a thumbs up if you liked it in YouTube and um, look forward to sharing more of what I know and what I can help you with here in the future. So have a great day and we'll catch you on the other side. Be well.